Hi, Jesse Flores, Super Web Pros, and today I want to talk about one of the most important plugins you should have installed on your WordPress website if, in fact, you care about speed and performance for your website visitors and for search engines. So let's dive in. So the plugin I'm referring to today is the one called Asset Cleanup Page Speed Booster. It's available both in light for free and there is a pro package which does even more. It has even more power, which starts at only $49 per year. Now, what does this plugin do and why does it matter? Well, before we can dive into that, let's first do a quick segue into how the internet even works in the first place. You see, when you go to a website or you go to a web page, if you were to look underneath the hood, once you refresh a web page, what you're going to see is a bunch of resources that are being loaded. This is a performance graph that comes on any Chrome browser when you install the development tools. And here you can see all of these different things that are being loaded in whenever this one page is loading. So there's a ton of stuff happening underneath the hood. Now you may have seen something like this whenever you run a Google page speed report on one of your web pages, when you start to see something like, for instance, the largest contentful paint taking a long amount, a long time with a lot of blocking time. And if you see something like this, reduce unused JavaScript or reduce unused CSC and reduce or eliminate render blocking resources, it's because what's happening is all of these different resources are loading and some of them are blocking other resources. You have to remember that when a website is loading, the way a website loads is top to bottom reading this code. And so by default, what happens is that when the website is loading, it's gonna go and execute this code, wait for it to complete before it goes to the next line, before it goes to the next line, before it goes to the next line. And so as long as we have a bunch of code, typically up here in our head stack, or in our head tag rather, you're gonna see all these different requests that are having to load before we even get down to where the content is visible, which typically starts on a body tag. And here I am, I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling. And now I'm finally uh, near the body class right there. And this is when we actually start to get to something that a user is able to see. So before a user can even see anything, our website is going in and loading all of these additional scripts. Now, what these page speed tools like this are telling us is that on many pages, we have a bunch of scripts that are adding, in this case, 8.93 seconds to the page load time, but they aren't being used. And this is actually the problem that Asset Cleanup intends to solve. You see, while for many websites, the number one thing that slows them down is having a lot of media that hasn't been optimized, media meaning images and videos, the second thing and very close thing uh, on their heels is having way too much code being loaded in, especially if you're using a content management system like WordPress, where whenever you install a plugin, many times those plugins are going in and installing a bunch of additional code in those head tags in order for that one plugin to work, but aren't necessarily used or necessary for every single other page where that plugin isn't being used. Now, it's important to remember that when we're running a Google page speed report, it's really only looking at that one page at that time. So what we've done is we've created our own reports that allow for us to evaluate the entire website at any given time to see what exactly is happening underneath the hood. Now, if you're one of our customers on uh, super support with this extension, you would get this as well inside of your super support dashboard. Of course, if you'd like for us to run this kind of report for yourself, reach out to a pro and we're happy to help you with that. So looking at our uh, at our own report here, we can see that on average, we've got tons of resources that aren't being used, unused CSS and unused J JavaScript. Here we can tell when we dive into the actual details that there are hundreds of resources that are blocking the rendering of, of visuals that users care about, things like pictures and text. And that if we look over here, we will see that there is a ton of unused CSS and JavaScript, most of which is gonna be contributing to these render blocking resources that, allow, that are preventing users from being able to experience things on our website. So clearly we do need many, if not all of these plugins, otherwise we wouldn't have installed them. But the problem is, is that installing them is coming at a high price where when we install these plugins, they're loading up our website with a bunch of unnecessary code on different pages where they might not be necessary. So how do we solve this? Well, to get started, we're gonna go in and install Asset Cleanup. To do this, we're gonna log into our WordPress backend and dashboard, and we're gonna come over to Plugins, Add New. From here, we can go into here where we search plugins and we can find Asset Cleanup. 
asset cleanup will show up and if we don't yet have it installed it will have an install now button where we can click it and then activate it now in this case we've already got it installed so i don't need to reinstall it or activate it but if you don't have it installed on your system you would need to click install now and then activate it once it's installed it's time to go and start configuring it to configure asset cleanup we're going to see on the left hand side here once it's installed asset cleanup or if like us you have the pro version installed it'll say asset cleanup pro if you click on getting started here it will give you some background as to why a website needs to be fast and how in fact asset cleanup works there's also some video tutorials that you can look at in addition to this one in order to help you make some progress the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our settings and we're going to see here a bunch of different options here so we've got our default settings here for optimizing css javascript um, for setting up a cdn if we need to do that for going through and managing our CSS and our JavaScript, for managing plugins and for making bulk changes and then a couple of other things. Now, it's important to recognize that the rest of this can get pretty technical. And so we're gonna keep it as high level as we can. But if you're really not comfortable managing with the tech stack on your website, it's really important that you reach out to a professional who can in fact help you. Particularly when you're talking about something like this, removing CSS and removing JavaScript, both of which impact the front end of your website, it's very possible that you can break something if you're not careful. To get started, we're gonna show how this works on one page. And from there, we can start to back into more bulk changes, but let's go ahead and show what happens on one page. So if I go into this one page here that we already assessed and saw that it was slow, and I click on edit page, we're gonna start seeing all of the WordPress options back, uh, all the WordPress options start to load. Now here, we're using Beaver Builder on this particular page. If you're using a different page builder, this might look a little bit different. If you're using the default Gutenberg editor, this will look very different. You'll see all of your page content in there. What you wanna do is scroll past that whole section and come down to the area that says Asset Cleanup, or if you're like us and you're using Asset Cleanup Pro, Asset Cleanup Pro. And here you're gonna see a couple of things. Here you're gonna see, first of all, that we are on a page post type um, for different types of post types or different types of pages might be part of different types of posts. So for instance, if you're looking at a product on WooCommerce, this would be a WooCommerce product type. If you're looking at another kind of custom post, uh, maybe you're in LearnDash, this would be a SFW um, LP course type, okay? The reason that that's important, as we'll see in a second here, is because we have the option to, when we're inside of Asset Cleanup, we have the option to go in and make changes to all post types of that type at one time if we want to. Now, in this case, we're not going to do that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dive in. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can look at these assets. By default, it's going to group them by location. So things that are associated with plugins, things that are associated with your themes, things that are inside of your WordPress uploads directory, things inside of the WordPress core, which we generally suggest you don't mess with, things that are coming in from third parties, things that have been hard-coded, and then additional options. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and click on from plugins. Now I know as I start to look through this that we are using this plugin on this page and in fact on every other core page. So I'm gonna keep these because I know that I, don't, that I do want these assets to load on every single page. And here we can see that this also groups it by file type. So here we see that these next five files are all part of this Beaver Builder plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through and just skip all these for the time being. And I'm gonna keep all these loaded. The next one I come to is Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder. It's got one file. That file is 86 kilobytes. Uh, and so again, we want our pages, generally speaking, to be certainly less than one megabyte, ideally 500 kilobytes or less. So 86 kilobytes is already pretty large. And so here, I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, I know we're using ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder. I don't want to unload it, but then the question is, should I preload it? So this is a JavaScript file here, and I'm gonna go ahead and select, yes, I want basic preloading. Now it's important to recognize that up here, this is going to apply site-wide. So I had already applied this setting somewhere else. So by default, we don't generally include carousels on the top of our pages because I tend to find that they add unnecessary overhead and really distract users from being able to get to the core thing, which is usually some form of conversion. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this preloaded 
but I'm not going to necessarily have it loaded in the head, which is where it wants to be by default. So again, these are site-wide changes that I had made on previous pages of our website. And so here, what you might see is you might see that this is in fact in a head script. Now, what does that mean head versus body? Well, if we go back to what we showed before, we would see here, remember again, that there's things that are in the head tag and things that are in the body class. But anything in the head tag is not going to be visible to a customer or to a visitor on your website. Everything that's inside of a head tag is really just going to be presenting or setting up the structure for everything that shows up then in the body class. It's also used for tracking for a lot of marketing, uh, marketing tags if in fact that is what you're using. So we have to make a decision. Do we want this to show up in that head tag before a visitor can see anything or leave it in the body. Now, because we don't have carousels at the top of our page, we don't need this to load, and I'm not worried about this breaking anything if, in fact, we move it to the body. So here we are, we've moved it to the body. Now, if I scroll down here, we see the next thing is for Beaver Dash. Now, Beaver Dash is something that I know we're using with Learn Dash in order to be able to use Beaver Builder with Learn Press, or sorry, Learn Dash. And so here, we are not using anything related to Learn Dash on this particular page. So I'm gonna go ahead and check all, and it automatically now will unload all 10 of these files from this particular page. At least I will once I click upload. So here we see now in red, these have been in unloaded. Now again, I mentioned at the beginning that this can get pretty technical pretty quickly. So if you start to find yourself a, a coming up against plugins that you're not sure about, it's really important that either you start to test them, which we'll cover in a second, or ask your developer what it's for and have him or her tell you whether or not that in fact is necessary on that specific page. Now, it's really important that you're clear here because a lot of times for a lot of developers that haven't been trained in things like performance optimization or speed optimization uh, and who do most of their work by installing plugins, they may or may not be aware that you can load and unload plugins on specific pages. And so they might tell you, yes, you need to keep this, uh, in this case, we're talking about uh, Beaver Dash. Yes, you need to keep Beaver Dash installed, otherwise it will break your Learn Dash courses. Well, the reality is it does need to be installed, but only on those pages. It does not need to be installed on all the other pages. And this is what Asset Cleanup is allowing us to do, right? I want that, be, I want that plugin to be able to influence my layouts on the pages where I want them, which is on our learning management system. But what I don't want to do is have all of that, uh, all of those scripts then weighing down every other page because I've loaded this plugin, which is necessary over here, but didn't unload it over here. Okay, so it's really important that when you're talking to your developer that you make sure you ask them specifically, do we need this plugin on this specific page or this specific group of pages? So let's dive back in. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to move through here. And again, I see this Convert Pro, and again, and we are not using Convert Pro on this page as well. So I'm gonna check all those and we're gonna unload that here. Here we're gonna get rid of 60 kilobytes there, 44 kilobytes there, so that's already 100 kilobytes. So if we're trying to keep this under 500 kilobytes, there's 20% of it right there just in this one plugin. Now we look down here and we see if so, and right now we're not using, using this on this page as well. We aren't using search and filter on this page. We're not using this plugin here on this page. We aren't using this one, and this one is adding a couple kilobytes. We aren't using this one. And there we go. And so now we can see just by scrolling through this that we were able to get rid of a ton of unnecessary code. If I click update here, those changes will take effect. And we've just gotten rid of a bunch of unnecessary code that we don't need on this particular page. Now, all of this is barely scratching the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that we can do with Asset Cleanup. So let's go over a couple of those options really quickly before we end this video. So here we are back in the Asset Cleanup dashboard on our WordPress website. And we can see there's a couple of other things that I wanna call your attention to. So the first is test mode. It's really important that when we are inside of this and we're doing this, especially for the first time, that we turn on test mode. So what test mode does is it allows for you to go through and make changes with asset cleanup and see it only from your perspective, but it will not impact what your visitors see. In order to confirm that, 
you can always go and launch an incognito browser here and keep the page that you're working on open in order to see what the user sees and compare that to what you're doing in that particular mode. The second two things I want to call attention to are the optimization of CSS and JavaScript and whether or not you want to minify, uh, combine, defer, or inline. When we talk about the minification of assets or the combining of assets or, the def or deferring assets, what we're really talking about is taking files that are this large, compressing them into smaller ones, or taking multiple files, combining them into one file, and then smushing it, um, and, or, and or deferring that file's loading until the very last possible minute, maybe after all of the default code has loaded. Now again, this is also very technical, but if you are on a performance web host like WP Engine or you're using a service like Cloudflare, there's a good chance that a lot of this might be handled for you out of the box. And so it's really important, again, that you work with your development team to figure out which of these optimizations are already in place. If in fact you try to optimize using asset cleanup and you've already got these optimizations over here, you can actually end up breaking a lot of things um, because they will be competing and conflicting and things won't actually work the right way. Looking back through these really quickly, there's also settings for rewriting asset URLs if you're using a CDN. Again, this will depend on exactly your stack, so you wanna make sure you're working with the developer to figure out if this is necessary for you. There's opportunities for site-wide common unloads. For example, these WordPress dash icons, which are up these little guys up here, which are necessary for the WordPress admin, but not necessarily for your website visitors, and which can add extra overhead that's unnecessary. Down here, we've also got the opportunity to clean up some of your HTML sources, to preload fonts, particularly if you're using Google Fonts, there's a specific setting for that, and combining those into fewer requests, meaning that instead of having a request for one family and then the other family, it gets combined into a single family, and you've got some options there about whether or not you wanna keep doing that through render blocking, do it asynchronously with JavaScript, or do it through CSS. Again, it's hard to be able to say in one short video what all of these settings should be because everyone's systems vary tremendously. And whether you're using a particular performance web host or you're using Cloudflare or whether you've got WP Rocket or any of these other things also working on your behalf can dramatically influence whether or not these settings should or shouldn't be turned off. But the core point that I wanna make sure we're clear about is what's so great about asset cleanup is that all of that additional overhead that often gets added whenever you are installing plugins on WordPress, you can unload them on a page by page or group by group basis so that you do not have those things weighing down your website unnecessarily and you can keep them focused only in the areas that you need in order to provide the best possible user experience. So we know that speed optimization can be a massive undertaking and there's a lot of things to take to keep in mind when you're doing it. So we've put together our own guide that you can download for free from our website. If you click the link down in the description, we'll send it to you right away and we'll see you on the next one.